Okay, so here's one more problem involving geometric vectors. So what is the problem? We're given three vectors that are pointing from the three vertices of a triangle to the midpoints of the opposite sides. And the claim is that if we add these three vectors up, we get the zero vector. As always, we first draw a picture. So what do we have? We have this triangle, and you can draw any triangle. It doesn't matter. So let's just go with this following picture. Let's label our vertices, right? This is, say, vertex A, vertex B, vertex C. And whenever you have a geometric figure and you label the vertices, always label the vertices counterclockwise. And you'll see for some problems it won't matter, but for other problems it will be very important. If you would label the vertices clockwise, the problem will no longer make sense. So always go counterclockwise. It doesn't matter if you start here with A and B, C, that's okay, but always go counterclockwise. And what do we have? We have these three vectors pointing from the vertices to the midpoints of the opposite side. So say here we have vector U starting at A, pointing to the midpoint of segment BC. So this is vector say u, and we have here a vertex of interest, so we'll go with, well, abc naturally, d. Then we have the vector pointing from vertex c to the midpoint of ab, say this vector is v, and again, we have a vertex of interest. Let's call this vertex E. And finally, we have the vector pointing from B to the midpoint of the opposite side, which is AC. My picture is a little crooked, but it doesn't matter. And suppose we call this vector the third vector, W. Once again, we have a vertex of interest. Let's call this vertex F. So that's the picture. Well, let's write down what we know in terms of this picture using equalities between vectors. So here's what we know. What we know is quite simple, that the points E, D, and F are the midpoints of the respective, the respective segments. So if you look at the, this segment, E is the midpoint of AB can be captured by the equality that says that the vector AE is equal to vector EB, which is just half of vector AB. Same thing goes for D. BD equals DC equals half BC. And finally, for F, CF equals FA equals half of CA. And this is all we know. Well, we want to show that the sum of the vectors U plus V plus W is indeed the zero vector. Well, as always, we have an equality between two vectors. We start from one side and get the other. It's more natural to take this sum and simplify to the zero vector than take the zero vector and expand it somehow to this sum. So we'll start with this sum, and this will be the beginning of our solution. u plus v plus w. And the idea is to walk along the outer perimeter of the triangle. And if you think of it, if you walk along the triangle, one complete perimeter, you end up at the original point, which will give you the zero vector. 
Let's see if we can accomplish that. Of course, hitting the points of interest. The points are the three midpoints of the respective edges. So vector u is this vector. Well, instead of walking from a to d directly, right, the vector u is just a vector a d, we can do a b plus b d. And now we've touched the midpoint d. We can circle that one. We've hit that midpoint. Plus v. Well, the vector v we can walk from c to e to form vector v or we can instead walk from c to A, and then from A to E, right? So let's do that. The vector V is just the vector CE, which is the same as CA plus AE. And now we've hit this midpoint. When we add W, well, we'll do quite simply BC plus CF, right? BC plus CF will allow you to walk to the other midpoint. So let's do that. And you see we've walked along AB, we've walked along CA, and now we're going to walk along BC. So vector W is BC plus CF. Now let's see what we have here. The idea is what we've said, if we walk along the triangle one complete perimeter, we'll get the zero vector. And if you think of it, we have accomplished that. AB is this edge. Plus, we have a vector here, BC, which is this edge. And finally, plus vector CA. So we've put these three vectors together and look at it in two ways. Look at it geometrically. From A to B, so we walk from A to B, then from B to C, then from C to A, so we've walked from A to A. You can look at it this way too. You walk from A to B, then from B to C, then from C to a, so you've walked from A to A. It's the vector AA, which we know is just a zero vector. So we'll complete that in a second, plus. Well, the other three vectors, well, think of it. BD, and again, the idea is we want to walk along the full perimeter of the triangle. But the vector BD, if you think of it, BD is just one half of BC, because BD D being the midpoint of BC, therefore vector BD is one half of AC. Same thing with AE. AE is one half of AB, and CF is one half of CA. So let's use that, and let's put them in the following order. So the vector AE is one half of AB plus the vector BD is one half of BC and finally plus CF which is one half of CA. But now if you think of it every vector here is multiplied by a half we can pull out the scalar multiple and we'll have one half of the vector AB plus the vector BC plus the vector CA. This is the vector zero we've just said plus one half of 
And if you look at this now, we've walked from A to B, then from B to C, then from C to A, then, whoops, we walked from A to B, then B to C, and then from C to A, so we've walked from A to A. From the picture, we've went along the perimeter once, from A to B, then B to C, then C to A. So what we have here is the zero vector, the vector AA, which is the zero vector, but a half of the zero vector is just the zero vector, so we get the zero vector plus itself, and that's just the zero vector. And this completes our proof. So the only idea here that we had to use, and we used it twice, was that instead of walking along these vectors, instead of adding them directly, we can find a way to add them by walking along the perimeter of the triangle, and if we complete one full perimeter, we know that the end result is the zero vector. And that's this problem.